Hey class, I just want to talk real quick about SA1, which is coming up soon, so you should be thinking about it. You may already want to go ahead and get started. Um, so SA1 is pretty straightforward. Uh, you have a choice of, I believe it is, five rhetorical strategies um, that you can choose from for the essay. <clears throat> Those rhetorical strategies are narration, so telling a story, process, so explain to me how to do something, cause and effect or cause and effect, um, cause, effect, or cause and effect, sorry. So, uh, you know, if you want, if you want to focus on a particular event and, a, event and anticipate the causes, um, you could do that. Compare and contrast is another one. So if you want to compare and contrast two different sports, two different types of automobiles, something like that. Uh, and then classification and division, which is taking something and breaking it apart into digestible pieces. Um, so, you know, you think a lot about the relationship between the whole and the parts uh, in that one. Each of these strategies has a chapter that, or I believe a, a, uh, a section, not necessarily a chapter, that, that uh, can be found in your textbook. I believe it is chapter three of your textbook, which is the rhetorical modes of writing. Uh, and you will find not only information about what that strategy is, but also examples, uh, example essays and things of that nature. So um, in terms of your topic, it's what topic you can choose. I'm going to leave this mostly open. Um, you know, I trust you to be able to pick a topic that you can generate three pages about. Uh, and so I'm not going to put too many constraints about topics. Um, if you are struggling to find one, uh, you can send me an email or shoot me a message and, and we can talk about that. Um, but by and large, I'm going to leave that up to you. Okay. So you, you need five paragraphs, you need a thousand words, these are the requirements. You must have a hook, an attention-getting hook. The thesis must be the last sentence of the introduction. Each body paragraph must have topic sentences. You must use 8th edition MLA format. Uh, and if you use a source, you must quote and cite it. I recommend staying away from secondary sources. For this one, you're going to be forced to use them. You're going to have to use them for essay two. Uh, so a couple of things about that. What is a thesis statement? A thesis statement is the general overarching idea that a specific essay uh, is putting forward. Okay. Depending on the strategy you use, it may be an argument that you make. Otherwise, it may, may just be a clear statement about what it is that you are addressing in the essay. So for example, if you were to do a process essay, your thesis statement might adhere something to the template of the process of fixing a car battery can be broken down into three easy steps, which are, and then you list the steps, X, Y, and Z, okay? Um, and that would be a pretty solid thesis statement. What you want with the thesis statement is in a single sentence, you want to make it glaringly apparent to your reader what it is that the essay is dealing with, okay? And where does the thesis statement go? It goes at the end of the introduction. It always goes in that one place. You should think of the thesis statement as like a roadmap to the essay. Uh, and so you want your thesis to be very well developed uh, and be specific as possible and make sure that you cover all of the bases in the, in the thesis statement. It's a single sentence, but it's extremely important. Then you need something called topic sentences. So if the thesis goes at the end of the introduction, the topic sentences go at the start of the body paragraphs. Uh, and those topic sentences are like smaller pieces of the thesis. So if you re recall the um, made up thesis I had about the car battery, and I had three steps to each um, to the process, each of your topic sentences might address one of those steps. So it's related to the thesis, but it's more compartmentalized, more focused, uh, and, and it lets you get uh, sort of down with the specifics, so to speak. Um, so you need, th you need topic sentences, one for each body paragraph. Okay, and I'm really going to be looking for those. For some reason, I usually don't get well-developed topic sentences on the first essay. Uh, in fact, sometimes I don't get them until 1102 class when, uh, you know, if someone's had me before, they now know, they've heard, heard me say it. 
enough times. Um, so please try to generate, you know, keep in mind the first thing you have to do for each body paragraph is say what that paragraph is dealing with in the form of a topic sentence. The other thing is once you set forth that topic sentence, that's what you're locked into for that paragraph. Okay, so there's not going to be any just, you know, talking about step one of the battery changing process and then start talking about step two for no reason halfway through the paragraph. That has its own paragraph and its own topic center. Um, and then one thing I would say is that for the conclusion, one thing that I always say about the conclusion. The conclusion, I like to call it the um, least important and most difficult part of the essay. Well, why is it the least important? You've already made your argument. You've already put forth what you're going to put forth in the essay. Uh, and so when you get to the conclusion, it's like, what else is there to do, right? Um, so what a lot of people do, and I typically do not prefer that you do this, but a lot of people like to repeat their argument sort of in a summary form at the end of the essay. Um, and I understand why even certain professors may have told you to do that in the past, certain teachers. Um, but if, in my case, I don't understand why you need to restate everything if I've already just read it. So for me, the conclusion is about open-ended speculation. It's about leaving your reader with a sense of closure. It's about saying something that hasn't already been said. And that can be very difficult. But again, most difficult, least important, right? You've already said everything, so uh, don't stress yourself on the conclusion. But a well-developed conclusion can really make or break an essay in certain circumstances. Um, okay, so that just kind of goes over the prompt and some of the organizational tips. Um, and I hope that this helps. One thing I do want to mention is that a good formula for introductory paragraphs is hook, line, and sinker. Okay, So the hook is the attention getter, which it's mentioned in this essay prompt. You want to be able to get my attention or get the reader's attention. Formal writing can be boring, man, and you really, uh, you want to make sure that you're not putting your reader to sleep, you know. Uh, I can't tell you how many essays I get that are like, since the beginning of time, human beings, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 uh, it puts you to sleep. So, Make sure you have something that gets my attention. Sometimes you can use a quote from somewhere. Sometimes you can just uh, mention some interesting facts. Like if you, for example, a great way to do, if we were going back to that, uh, that process of fixing a car battery. Okay, you want to get my attention? Maybe paint a picture of what a bad situation looks like if your car battery gives out on you. You know, imagine you're driving along the highway and all of a sudden you're stuck and there are buzzards circling overhead and there's nothing you can do because of your car battery. Right? That would be a great way to get me like, oh, man, you know, you're right. I should really read this essay because I don't want to end up in this, in this situation. You've gotten my attention. Right? So that's the hook. Then comes the line. What is the line? The line is everything I need to establish the context of the thesis statement. So if you're doing the car battery. You need to tell me about different types of batteries. You need to tell me about how often I should change the battery. You need to tell me about uh, places I can buy batteries. Maybe Any of the information that I would need to get what your thesis statement is about um, and to get how maybe if I wanted, in the case of the process uh, strategy, if I wanted to reassemble the um, process somehow, if I wanted to do it, you know, step by step, you might want to tell me, like, you know, like I said, where to go to get the parts, uh, maybe a list of parts that I need, you know, things like that up front so that I would have the context. And then when you give me your thesis statement about the three steps, I'm like, okay, good. I got my parts. I got my steps. We're ready to go. So big thing about essays, organization, thesis and topic sentences. Those are terms that you need to stick in your brain. Uh, you need to pick from one of these strategies, review the chapter. I'm not going to, you know, I've actually cut some of the work in the course sh uh, shell down for you guys because I don't want to just make you do a bunch of busy work on these strategies. I'm leaving it up to you to read. Um, instead of making you do assignments and checking the little boxes and stuff, I'm going to get you to just read the chapter on the strategy. If you need me to talk about another strategy in more depth, please send me a message. I can generate videos to fit your needs. Uh, so hopefully that helps and uh, thanks for listening.